Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. As always, we pray that we find you in good spirits, in good health. And right now, I have been adding to my posts that we find opportunities to laugh. There are so many things going on on this planet that could cause you to weep bitterly. Amen. But I am praying and encouraging uh, all of us to find opportunities to laugh just to laugh at situations and circumstances, find something to laugh at, watch a funny movie, put on your favorite comedian, and just simply laugh. The Bible says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you today. We honor you today. We adore you, O oh God. You are worthy of the glory. You deserve the glory and the praise. All of the honor belongs to you. All of the adoration belongs to you, O oh God. You are worthy of excellent praise. We honor you and we adore you today. You are the God of our salvation and the God of our comfort. You are our healer, our way maker, and our deliverer. You are the mighty awesome God of all creation and unto you alone belongs all of the glory in Jesus name, amen. Amen and amen again. This song comes to my mind. You deserve the glory. Yes, you do. And the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. And we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. And all the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. And we bless your holy name. He is worthy of the glory, the honor, and all of the praise. Amen. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but some songs just take you there, don't they? They just take you to that place. Amen. To God be the glory. You know, we've been talking about the prayer of supplication for the month of September, and we're going to continue all throughout this month. But there is a thought about the prayer of supplication that I want us to consider. Amen. Last week, we talked about Philippians 4 and 6, where the scriptures declare, um, make your requests known unto God. Amen. Through prayer, supplication with thanksgiving. Don't be anxious for anything. Make your requests known unto God. And that is what we've been talking about all year long. Amen. And we're going to continue to discuss making our requests known unto God. We have prayed for our pastors. We've prayed for ourselves. We have prayed in agreement. We've prayed the prayer of intercession. We have prayed the prayer of faith. And now we're talking about the prayer of supplication. Amen. But I want to read a scripture to you today. Because even in this prayer of supplication, I want us to get a grave understanding of the prayer of supplication. Amen. We know that God is available uh, to us and he's available to answer our prayers to do for us what nobody else can do. Not even what we ourselves can do. Even if we can do something, God, believe me, is able to do even more than that. But there's one part of supplication that I want us to look at today, and then we're going to move quickly on from it um, to, to next week. Amen. But this prayer of supplication, I want you to consider because God has made ways for us. He has opened doors for us. He has made great provision for us. All things that pertain to life and godliness, he has provided. Amen. But there are some times and there are some people, even in 2020, that are going through difficulties because of choices that we have made outside of the will of God. It happens. None of us are flawless. And it does happen. Amen. But what I want to hopefully get across to you today as we look at this one example 
is to encourage us that no matter what life choices that we have made that are outside of the will of God, they are not greater than God. Whatever life choices that we have made outside of the will of God that are not pleasing to God, that were not beneficial for our lives or for the lives of anybody else or loved ones or whoever, God is still greater. He is still greater. I want to encourage you to know that God is still greater. And so we're going to look at a young man who gave up something very, very valuable, very valuable for something very minor. Let's look at this. I'm reading out of Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. But we're going to talk about Esau just for a moment. Amen. Hebrews 12. I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Well, how is that happening? By not following peace with all men. We talked about in prayer how several things, several components come into play for answered prayer. One of those major components is forgiveness. One of those major components is forgiveness. We talked about patience being a part of that and some other aspects, but one of the major components is forgiveness. The scriptures are telling us that if we follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently unto the Lord, lest any man fail of the grace or fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled or pulled away from the things of God. And so as we look at this prayer of supplication today, let's not just look at it only in the aspect of I'm getting my prayers answered or I'm getting from God what I need. Let's look at the whole picture of the prayer of supplication and find out where you might be or where we all might locate ourselves. Amen. He said in verse 16, Hebrews 12, 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For one morsel of meat, he sold his birthright. I'm going to go to Genesis 25. For one piece of meat, he sold his birthright. Granted, he was hungry. <laughs> Granted, he was hungry. That is in Genesis 25. Amen. Granted, Esau was hungry as we all get hungry. Esau had been working hard as we all work hard. Amen. Esau had been having the time of his life out there getting his father's uh, favorite meal in order because he was a hunter using his skills, his gifts, listen, using his skills, his gifts, and his talent. And yet hidden on the inside of Esau was unforgiveness. Genesis 25, it talks about Rebecca having these two babies warring in her womb and the Lord giving her understanding of what's happening on the inside of her. I'm wondering, is there something warring on the inside of you that the Lord needs to grant you understanding? Listen to this. Um, and Rebecca, Genesis 26, 25, 21. Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. He entreated the Lord. He pleaded. He supplicated unto the Lord. He begged the Lord to grant Rebecca children. For his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. 
and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? If it be the Lord's will, or if it be well, or if things are going well with me, why am I going through this? We've asked those questions. Lord, if all is well, why am I going through this? If you're with me, why am I going through this? If you're for me, why am I going through this? And she went to inquire of the Lord. That's the best place to go when you don't understand what's happening. Inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her, room, in her womb, just as the Lord had said. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau, which means hairy. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and it healed, and his name was called Jacob, or supplanter, or deceitful, or the one who takes the heel. Jacob was an opportunist. And Isaac was threescore or sixty years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a skillful hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a mild, plain man, dwelling in tents. He was a homebody, a bit. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, in other words, Jacob was making some pottage, what we might call grits, grits with some butter. I don't know, are you a sugar person grits or a salt person grits? Let me know. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom or Red. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. This is Jacob's plot. Jacob is plotting against Esau to get the birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? We're going to come back to that. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Esau ate, got his fill of food, and went on about his way without even considering the value of what he had just given up. Thus Esau despised his birthright. And that's where Hebrews chapter 12 is giving us this description of Esau. And how, for he knew, for ye know, how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. This is what I want to leave with you today. Amen. Number one, you have a birthright. You have a God-given birthright. Number two, it is very, very valuable. Number three... Do not sell your birthright. Do not sell the longevity of your birthright for instant gratification. Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of soup, for some grits, add butter, add sugar. That would be me. Amen. He sold his birthright for some pottage or porridge or grits. Polenta is what the rich folk call it. Amen. Either way it goes, he sold his birthright for it and he could never get it back. And he sought for it. He entreated. He um, supplicated for it. He begged for it from his father. If you read the account in Genesis, he begged his father to give him a blessing. But it was too late. He had already sold it. He had already devalued it. He had already discounted it. What I want to encourage you about today is don't discount who you are. Don't discount the blessing that God himself has put on your life. Don't discount the birthright that God himself 
has uh, established over your life. Don't discount the inheritance that God himself, the creator of the universe, has declared and decreed over you. When you go to look for it again, you won't find it. Esau could not find it after he had let it go. Amen. My encouragement to you today is this. Hold on to what God has given you. You are here for a reason. He created you in your mother's womb for a reason. Whether you know who your mother is or not. He created you specifically for a reason, a purpose, and a life to be lived to the glory and honor of God. My prayer is that you would hold on to your birthright. Amen. And let God bless you as he takes you on a journey through life. Thank you for joining me today here at Monday Manna. Amen. I want to encourage you. I just want to share some things with you that are in the makes. Amen. And that are on the books. Vision University is starting a new quarter. We have laid a new foundation of instruction and we're starting out with Experiencing God, Knowing and Doing the Will of God by Henry Blackaby. The, these classes and courses at Vision University are open for whosoever will across the globe. Amen. The books are available at lifeway.com, Amazon, or eBay. We would love it, absolutely, if you would join us starting September 20th, 2020 at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. As you see this posting on Facebook, if you would like to instant message me for more information, please do so, or feel free to call our church office at 931-614-7997. My name is Evangelist Hutchinson. I look forward to meeting with you again here at Monday Manor. Until then, may God richly bless you real good. Amen.